1995, we made the greatest advance with this. We found that if you do a microsurgical uh, evaluation of the outer perimeter of the testes, never dig inside the testes, that can destroy the testes. But just in the outer millimeter, uh, 60% of the time, we find a tiny number of sperm, maybe four or five, maybe six or seven sperm. And that's all we need to inject with ICSI into the egg and have a normal pregnancy rate. So that was a major advance, and that was in 1995. Now, if the doctor, there are two ways that the doctors might have been in error in 2006. One is they might have been over aggressive and Dug, dug their way through the testicle doing a micro dissection, which I think is a disaster. And then your testicle shrinks up and there's nothing you can do about it, really. They've destroyed it. But the other thing is you might just do a little biopsy and then there might still be sperm there that you've missed. So what I recommend, microsurgically, under local anesthesia, make an incision throughout from the top to the bottom of the testicle, but don't dig inside and just shave off the outer millimeter and then search in the lab for four to six hours because you might find a few sperm. 60% of the time you will find a few sperm. Uh, and the reason that that is the case is that you may think you're making no sperm and have Sertoli cell only throughout most of the testes, but you may be making a tiny number of sperm that is an insufficient number to spill over into the ejaculate going through the epididymis and the vas deferens and the ejaculatory ducts into the ejaculate. So you have nothing in the ejaculate, but you have a, just a tiny number in the testes. And uh, that's called a leaky gene. We know it's all genetic and that's called a leaky gene. So um, it's possible that re looking, you might find sperm. Second point, and this is for the future. Uh, we're doing uh, skin biopsies. This is research. And that's all. And then we're uh, transforming those skin cells, the fibroblasts in the skin, we're transforming that to uh, stem cells, which we call iPS cells. That's induced pluripotent cells. Yamanaka got the Nobel Prize for that uh, seven years ago. Now, then we can take those stem cells, and we certainly, in all the men we've done this so far, we can mature them to PGCs, primordial germ cells. So that's the first stage of spermatogenesis. And now the question is, how do we go from those primordial germ cells to mature sperm? Well, um, we, we don't know for sure, but at least our experiments on the mouse work. If you inject them into a neonatal mouse, these PGCs, they become spermatogenic stem cells and they result in sperm production. Now, uh, the neonatal mouse we think is very similar to the, um, just the early pubertal male human. Uh, if you inject these PGCs into an adult, we're probably not gonna get anything. So we have to figure out how to take those PGCs and incubate them in the type of fetal or, or, or prepubertal type Sertoli cell or artificial uh, seminiferous tubule culture in a Petri dish to make sperm. And actually, Dr. Hayashi, our colleague in Osaka, Japan, who we work closely with on this, uh, is working on that project right now in the mouse. And, you know, if he can do it in the mouse, then we'll be able eventually to do it in the human. But that could be 10 or 20 years off before we're ready to really be that successful in the human. But that's where we're going. That's the new field. Mm -hmm.